welcome to another edition of the Full Force News Burst, brought to you by GeneralsJoes.com, with me as your host, Chris Space Tonight McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. Joining me today to discuss news of writer Zach Penn's hiring on the Hasbro and Paramount ROM movie is Brian Diarath Hickey. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, let's get stuck into this news burst. Fresh from his recent adaptation of Ernest Cline's Ready Player One novel for the big screen, Zach Penn, a cracking name considering he's a writer, has been signed on to adapt Rom the Space Knight for Hasbro's AllSpark Pictures and Paramount Pictures. So what do we think about this, Brian? I mean, the guy has got some serious experience chops here. I mean, he's done comic book and sci-fi stories before. How do you think he'd fit for something like Rom? Well, I'm pretty excited about this, right, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, when you look at his back catalogue, there's, um, some, there's some really good work from Marvel in there, uh, work that I'm familiar with. So compared to, say, DJ Caruso, Caruso yep. um, who's, you know, whose work, you know, no, I don't think anybody on the call was particularly you know, amazed or excited about his kind of back catalogue. Nobody was d***ed. Nobody was d***ed, were they? No, no, no one was feeling the d***ed, you know, but I think <laughs> this guy has definitely brought the d***ed to... <laughs> You know, the, the Marvel universe. Yes. Okay. So like we, we know now. Okay, I'm saying that I'm not. You know, I can't say exactly what his total contribution was. Obviously, an amazing creative team has worked on all those movies, but uh, you know, the output has been been pretty good. So it's reasonable to assume this guy plays at a very high level. That's something that I think the the Caruso element was missing a little bit, wasn't it? Like, and and with with DJ Caruso for Joe doing being so high up in like the in the in a high up major role. You just kind of think, okay, but then this has a little bit more chops to it, doesn't it? A little bit more kind of meat to it. You know, you're looking at the, say, that kind of fantasy, sci-fi adventure, superhero type adventure uh, movies. Rom fits into that category. Yeah, yeah. I think really, really well. And, you know, so I think Zach Penn could definitely bring something really, really, you know, good to the mix here. What also has me <laughs> about this is that... <laughs> I'm a, a big fan of, you know, I've said it loads of times on the show, a big fan of the Hasbro combined universe. Yeah. And I really like how you look at series like, say, Revolution or Revolutionaries that came after that, how they've interwoven all the different properties together. I think they did a great job of that. And, and, and how ROM fits into that whole dynamic, mm. you know, with G.I. Joe, with Transformers, with the Micronauts, I think works really, really well. So we discussed a little while back Previously, that um, some of the guys from the, the Hasbro writers room said nothing's ever going to happen on any of the, the combined <laughs> universe stuff, and then we get this news. Yeah. So I'm really excited that you know maybe something is going to happen. The the, the news, the, the source for this story looks pretty legit. Yeah, which dead, is... Deadline are a pretty solid source for this kind of stuff. And thanks as well, heads up from Paddy Lennon who found the story and sent it to us on our little group message. And I was like, right, posting that immediately. Thank you, Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> Paddy's always on the ball. He is. On the cutting edge. Um, with, on the cutting edge of <laughs> On the cutting edge of <laughs> balls. Yeah, he's always on the balls. Um, wow. Yeah, I, I want, a couple of things I would like to say about this. First off, with ROM in general, and, and, you're, and you, from what you said about the combined universe... I have to agree in that I, I enjoyed Rom in the Revolutionaries, in Revolution, in First Strike, etc., etc. I enjoyed him in Shining Armor with Transformers crossover. I haven't really been totally J I Z double Z'd, J I double Z'd, with his so, so like towards the end of the solo run, I started to get a little bit fatigued with him. Not with him necessarily, but with the the kind of constant reiteration of the same theme over and over again which i know you like you're in a story arc you know you're going to you're going to get that but it was almost like templated comics you know you, i i couldn't tell you what happens in each individual comic towards the end of that run because it just got a little bit like samey and the same has kind of happened a little bit with the Rom Micronauts crossover for me personally. And I said this on the Comics Burst when Paddy and I did a little uh, Comics Burst thing, which we'll be doing again next week, so don't worry. So I would suggest that I do like Rom, and I was really excited at the beginning. I loved how they kind of brought him into the universe. I loved his character and so on and so forth. I thought it was brilliant. I really enjoyed the other Space Knights as well. Like They just pulled out and they're like Livia, his uh, kind of female companion who you know is also a space knight and then 
Uh, I forget the other guy's name now, but he's got this huge snake tail in his pretty awesome like rom suit i just really like him but um and and no i do i do like the concept i think as a film it could come across pretty well i mean it's one of those things i think is a 50 50 i think it could you know they could go heavy cgi which they might have to do anyway just in general but that hasn't been necessarily been a problem for say iron man in the uh avengers and so on and so forth so i can i can kind of see them especially going with like a marvel writer for this one and coming up with some really cool kind of scenes for for Rom to be kind of involved in, and for those scenes to kind of be duplicated in in you know visuals. So I'm more I would say more excited about this than I am about the GI Joe movie news, and say even more so than like the Micronauts um, stuff that's been coming out as well. But I would I, you know again this is a we're way early in the process here. We're, we're talking adaptation from comic to a film script, so. We're still talking a couple of months uh, before we even get any news on how that's going, you know. Like, so I, I, I would suggest that it's early doors, but still quite an exciting little thing. Well, there's a couple of interesting things there. I, mean, I know I kind of get your point on the comics, and if you look, say, in the last you know twelve eighteen months, Ram has had you know had a lot of exposure in the comic universe between the different crossovers and obviously the standalone kind of Ram story. Yeah, obviously in a movie universe. You know, when they're not necessarily committing to like you know ten rom movies here. Uh, yeah, yeah. It might only might only be one movie that would hopefully then dovetail into a more kind of combined universe scenario. So you're not relying on having to dole out loads and loads of kind of you know content uh, to to, to, you know, to to just to, to build the entire universe just on rom. But it, it could be a very good entry point into the combined Hasbro universe fr- from a cinematic point of view. Yeah. Do, do the I suppose challenge then is that. Rom is one of these characters where he's such a bloody goody two shoes. Um, <laughs> a and bloody, a these... bloody two shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and he he's so noble and he's so righteous and and to write a character like that get, can get very challenging. Um, to make him interesting because you know we kind of want like you, you, you compare him to Iron Man, right? Yeah. And Iron Man's a bit of a you know certainly an Iron Man one. He's a bit of a maverick. He's a oh, bit of yeah. a rogue. Anti-hero. He's a cheeky bugger, you know. And then obviously his character develops over the the whole kind of you know uh, Avengers sort of arc and, yeah. and the different Iron Man movies. So. If, if they were going to do something a bit more than just one movie, if Ron was going to, if they were going to open it up possibly to like a trilogy and then also weaving that into a combined universe with other Hasbro characters, that's, you know, how they handle that character and that character progression is going to, pro- you know, is going to prove to be a, a challenge. But I mean, by the looks of it here is Zach Penn. I mean, he's worked with obviously, you know, X-Men. He's worked with the Avengers in terms of, you know, uh, story content. So, Maybe he's up for the challenge, and and I'd be curious to see you know how this progresses and what comes out of that. Yeah, and let's talk quickly about those that kind of like lineup of films he's been involved with. So X Two he was involved with, which I quite I, you know enjoyed that as a as an X Men movie. Uh, I enjoyed the first X Men movie. I think as I think it's of its time, and I think it's dated a little bit now. But still, I think they held up pretty pretty well, and they were they were almost direct. You know, there was a lot of comparisons that you could kind of put to the comic. You know, in the way the stories developed and the, how the characters were, and even how they looked. So they they did stick very close to the source material with the X Men films, and they were successful. X Men: The Last Stand obviously was a little bit rough, but at the same time, you know, I, I would I would actually go to say that was one of the that was one of the worst X Men movies. That and one I think with the wolverine origins when i wasn't a big fan of uh, you know again he's it's still like the adaptation experience here electra not a massive fan of that movie but again very close to the source material the incredible hulk a little bit better i mean the hulk movies are very very hit and miss <laughs> you know and i think it took the avengers to get the best out of the incredible hulk and the hulk, yes. of course we've got the avengers which I would say is probably out of all of those the the shining light out of all of them a really good you know again close to the source material but certainly enough of you know taking liberties with enough of the parts to kind of create something new and different and has really given the Marvel Cinematic Universe its own feeling and and, and own style but again I think that was probably more to do with the previous work 
on all of the build-up movies but i mean you can't really go wrong with the avengers i mean at that that point at which they start the fight with the chitauri in the in the city every scene you could pause that movie at any point and it's a screensaver like every yeah. every scene is just dramatic yeah and of course just recently left- ready player one sorry have i left one out we left what i was gonna say the last action hero oh belter. guilty pleasure belter that is an absolute <laughs> classic of a movie and a really good arnie movie as well uh yeah so i mean he's got i mean again it's uh, I, I think from those from that list you can see that he takes you know the, the in terms of the source material he sticks very close closely to it and as he's as you've as you've seen the progression through to say like the avengers and now ready player one which i haven't seen yet but i'm looking forward to seeing i believe it's in theaters at the moment in the u.s uh, I'm not sure if it's out in the UK yet. Is it out in the UK yet, Ready Player One? Um, I, do you know what? I'm not sure. I think it's coming this weekend. Uh, uh, okay. I did read on that article something about the premiere being on like Thursday or Friday or something. So maybe I'm just getting ahead of myself. But I definitely want to see that that movie just to kind of uh, see if it's any, you know, again, the, the source material being the, the, the novel from Ernest Cline originally. So yes. it'll be interesting to see how he takes that story and and developed it for the for the for the big screen so yeah i mean the the only difference i suppose here is that rom doesn't i mean rom doesn't have like a solid it doesn't have like a solid source material to take from i mean you've got the toy and then you've got the comics which you know again marvel had that run early on is he going to take from that is he going to stick closer to the idw universe is there going to be like a mixture of the two are we going to get anything from like the space knights run that was kind of rom and not rom at the same time you know i'm kind of interested to see what he kind of pulls from those well actually you've listed a few different kind of sources there um I mean, let's assume it's only a one-off movie that maybe might dovetail into a crossover um and, and if you look at it at that basis i think I mean, I didn't know anything about rom until the idw universe introduced them to me yeah and even at that point you know, we we got to see a little bit of kind of the the other space knights. We get a little bit about his backstory in there too, and then obviously he's kind of heavily involved in, in the various crossovers with the Micronauts, the mm-hmm. Transformers, and GI Joe. So even if you just take the kind of modern iteration of of Rom in the comics universe, there's potentially quite a bit from to, to build from in, yeah. in that space. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more than likely we'll see the the, the villain of the piece, the Dire Wraith. They're they're going to have to be embedded in there somehow. Uh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> that they, that's what they do. They embed themselves into you know humanity or whatever. And yeah, so I mean, obviously, like the die rates will be something that I expect to see. Space, uh, other space knights, interaction with human, as as is always the case with any kind of Hasbro oriented film, like the Transformers and so on and so forth. There's going to be that human interaction, which I sometimes I'm just not that bothered about. You know, I don't really always care for the human characters in a lot of these kind of things obviously where you've got the avengers the the interaction with humanity is part of the storyline when it comes to things like rom transformers uh even pacific rim which popped up the other day i know isn't you know necessarily related but i i all i want to see in pacific rim are monsters fighting massive robots i'm not that fussed about the human characterization of everything. I might have been had the first movie not been really bad in the acting department, but I just wasn't feeling, and I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for the uh, Pacific Rim hate here, but I wasn't (laughs) a massive fan of that film. (laughs) And I'm not crazy excited to see the second one because I just get the feeling it'll be more of the same. But in terms of like the fight, you know, that, that first trailer that dropped for Pacific Rim, I nearly dropped my under trousers and just crapped everywhere. Like I was just so amazed by what it how it looked. They didn't really show anything with the humanity, you know, the human characters. It was really all about the robots fighting monsters kind of teasers. And it looked spectacular. And I was really let down with, with how it kind of turned out. Um, you know, Pacific Rim is going to rely heavily on robots fighting monsters for the the factor <laughs> if yeah and, and the human characters aren't all that interesting anyway now you compare that to avengers all your superheroes they take off the mask at once at some point or yeah, another yeah and you get the human characters and that's actually what makes those characters so great is that they that they have the same challenges that that all humans can face um and and the superhero mask or costume 
isn't really it doesn't really resolve the real problems or challenges that they have so maybe for for ron you know to work as a character that comes back to that challenge that i was talking about how do you make that character interesting yeah and and and, and maybe we see ron before he gets encased in his in his armor mm, yeah uh, and we start the story starts there and then you know we maybe we might I don't know. I'm just I'm kind of rambling now. Well, a no, bit. I, would, I would agree with you on that. I'd also say they'll probably introduce the same thing that he can do in his suit in the current run, and that is to expose his face for a short period of time. He can like almost expose certain parts of his body. That sounds gross. Doesn't it? <laughs> hey. um, but like you know, he can he can like you know make it so that if he concentrates hard enough, his hand will appear where and the suit kind of dissipates or around it. And the same with his face, like he can make that appear. So I wonder if that will be developed a little bit in into the show. Sorry, into the uh, into the film, because I think that is obviously as much as I don't really like the human characters in a lot of these films. It, sometimes I think that's the way that you know how it, they've been handled in the writing aspect. Obviously, in, in something like the Marvel, X Men, Avengers kind of thing humanity is important because it's like you know it's a mutation of that, and then how they react in with humanity like transformers should be better in that but i feel like the focus is on the human characters more than it is on the transformers and that's i think where it loses me and the same thing for pacific rim as i mentioned again a little bit off off topic there but at the same time i think with with rom let's come back to that i think there's a there's definitely something there because it keeps coming up rom the micronauts they you know they they didn't do great in terms of sales in the comics and obviously they've been merged into the into the crossover at the moment but they're they're still there they're still going rom and the micronauts there's the micronauts uh tv series which has been announced the animated one yes there's the micronauts film that's been announced ahead you know i think ahead of gi joe i want to say it's going to be the first one it might be gi joe but irrelevant it's up there in the first you know trappings of films uh media etc etc so yeah we're seeing like a almost like a strong magnetism t- towards these two brands and yeah and i'm i'm not against that i mean i'm i'm happy to see how it how it pans out i just really hope we get a strong film from rom that isn't you know too heavily cgi based which obviously it's going to have to be to an, an extent but to the point where it makes it look weak and a little bit rubbish you know like maybe like making it look a little bit guardians of the galaxy could be the way to go with it you know oh totally um i mean that's a if you're going to model it on on a marvel movie that's a great way to look at it again very heavy cgi uh use in that movie but for me it's not about the medium it's you put the right creative team in place you get a good story you get good characters and then the CGI isn't what what matters then at that point. It's just mm. it's just the medium to deliver that excellent story. So maybe that's how they would you know that that worked very well for Guardians of the Galaxy. It worked very well in Avatar. I really enjoyed Avatar yeah. as a movie, and the story is just uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a classic story. Simple Some cool story. toys as well. Um, <laughs> great toys <laughs> those mech suits are amazing weren't they oh, look, i've got two of them absolutely love those look if we get the toys right then i still want a great movie okay that's <laughs> <laughs> still want a great movie but uh but if we get the toys of course we're all i think we're all gonna be happy um but you know bringing this back to that you know the, the movie and the, the wider hasbro universe I would love to see this be the starting point for something that you know similar to what Marvel uh, have achieved with their movie universe. Mm. So, wouldn't it be awesome if you, you know you're getting to the the latter scenes of of a Ron movie and the GI Joe characters start to get introduced exactly, into it? Yeah, like how they did with like uh, Nick Fury at the end of each uh, Iron Man, and then yes. you know all those different films. He was kind of he kept popping up at towards the end in like extended scenes and stuff. But yeah, totally would love that. And that and that's where you that's where you achieve the success with a combined universe is when you trickle each thing in over a long period of time uh, creating these like oh that's in the same universe oh that's in the same you know it was it took a while for me as a kid to realize that spider-man was in the same universe as say the x-men you know in terms of like when i re- read the comics and as a, as a kid i mean and i remember seeing spider-man in in one he, he was like he, it was one of those things where he was it was from his kind of you know like a over-the-shoulder shot watching something else happen in a different comic 
And when that happened, it kind of like all of a sudden it dawned on me like, oh, of course, they're all in the same universe. They're just in different cities or different parts of the globe. And, you know, that, it sounds like I was a really dumb kid, but <laughs> but at the same time, like it was one of those things where you kind of all of a sudden the excitement's there and you've got this thing where you, this thing to hold on to. It's like, oh, that's amazing. That means we can see this guy and this guy and this guy in the same, you know, in, in the same friggin uh, films and stuff like that. And now that they have finally worked that out or they've worked it out into a way that could be well written well done you know beautifully filmed and so on and so forth and you've got this incredible marvel cinematic universe which continues to keep churning out excellent content i mean like the black panther movie as you know what i still haven't seen it and i'm gonna but i'm gonna go ahead and say it's you know breaking records left right and center is a really solid you know people love it so i can't wait to see it i haven't seen that yet and um and I'm, I'm hoping to get out we've got a, a long weekend coming up this weekend so i'm hoping to get out this weekend and see the black panther movie and if i if i can manage it to also catch ready player one i'll be looking forward to seeing that one too awesome so basically coming back to what we're talking about zach penn signed on for rom um the film with uh, thanks to hasbro all spark pictures and paramount pictures um, it'll be interesting to see what comes of this. We'll be kind of sticking close to the news and obviously bringing what we can to you guys um, as and when we can. What do you guys think about this as well? Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, etc. Whatever you find, you know, jump on any of these things that we do and interact with us because we want to know- hear from you guys. And you never know, we might even call you out on the show as well. <laughs> um, Brian, thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate you jumping on for that. Oh, look, absolutely delighted. And um, just want to say, Zach Penn, bring the jits. <laughs> the pen is mightier than the j- that's it for this installment of the full force news burst thank you to my awesome co-host brian hickey see you next time and as always full force dong dong because of the whole rom thing i'm rom Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. And as always, you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com slash The Full Force. And if you would like to contact the show, you can message us on either of these platforms with feedback, questions or to say, who do you think you are? A serious operation now? No, not even close. Look out for more of these news bursts that we are posting on the Facebook page from now on. Full Force.